Okay, now I want to move on to the opening sequence of Naushka. Yes, in today's free part, I would talk about the opening sequence of Naushka. The reason why Takahata panned it and about Whisper of the Heart, I'll talk about the first part of these topics. Okay. Well, well. I'll start from the part after the pre-credit, which was a topic in the previous lecture. The pre-credit is a small drama part before the opening title of a movie. After Yupa's line, another village consumed in the toxic jungle, this text appears to describe the history explaining what has happened to mankind. Then, the opening sequence begins. The opening sequence tells us what happened. What happened before the world was consumed in the toxic jungle using a tapestry. The tapestry includes... Here it is. This famous image. The one with the title. So... This is a watercolor painting drawn on a piece of cloth. This was actually drawn at the final stage of the production. Miyazaki, who has finished all of his work, drew it with watercolor paint. This was mentioned by directors Hideaki Anno and Ryoichi Katayama in the DVD audio commentary. They did for the Nausuka DVD. Anno asked, so Miyazaki drew this at the end of the production? When he was done with his part of the job, Anno left the studio to go back to Osaka before the production was completed. So he didn't know that it was drawn by the director. Katayama replied that while we were busting our asses doing the final check and other works, Miyazaki, who was done with his job, seemed to have had a fun time drawing it. He was humming. Well, this Katayama's word sounds a little meaner than necessary, I thought. So, this is the first image in the opening sequence of Naushka, which Miyazaki is said to have had a fun time drawing. As I just mentioned before, he drew it after he finished all his work. This means that Miyazaki revisited the opening after completing the animation film. On the other hand, the same image in the storyboard was drawn before the production, and is slightly different. This is the same opening image of Naushka in the storyboard. It looks almost the same. The upper part represents the world of the Valley of the Wind, with the image of Naushka. The lower part has an image of Oroboros, the two-headed snake, which is a symbol of Tomekia, but it's slightly different in details. The difference is that in the lower symbol, tongues, which may look like the flame, are extending from both heads of this snake toward the sword, and the two images are contrasted by red and blue. It might seem like a minor difference, but actually it represents a huge change. The image in the storyboard was what Miyazaki planned it to be before the production. But when he drew the tapestry after the production, Miyazaki wanted it to be in this arrangement. He wanted the images of Naushka and Tomekia to be reversed. This side has a woman drawn, so what it represents is obvious. So, Miyazaki wanted to highlight this side with the sword, which represents Kushana, the princess of Tomekia. He wanted to emphasize that the story was about two characters, Kushana and Naushka. Unfortunately, Toshio Suzuki, the producer, was against this last-minute decision. He said that the title has the name Naushka, so let's stay focused on her. So, Miyazaki reluctantly had to go with the initial arrangement. So this is how Miyazaki actually wanted it. During the production of Naushka, he realized that the story was not only about Naushka, but also about the two women, Kushana and Naushka. In an interview after the film production, Miyazaki described them as two sides of the same coin. So he divided a single persona in two. This is quite a common practice in movies. Conflicting characters representing various sides of contradicting feeling of one person physically appear to speak the lines, externalizing the anguish of the person. When a person thinks, what shall I do, what should I do, it's hard for the audience to read it unless the character actually says it. So, various sides of the internal anguish of a person appear as respective characters to confront each other. And that's what makes a drama. Miyazaki was not aware that this applied to the two characters when he was making the storyboard, so he was simply drawing symbols.
He strongly realized it when he was drawing the tapestry as a final touch in the film production. The presence of Kushana grew bigger and bigger inside him. Then he realized that it was actually about two princesses who are on different sides, Valley of the Wind and Tomekia, but sharing the same anguish. I'll go into this further in the second half. As you can see in this example, people often wonder what the creator was thinking when they see their work, but sometimes that's just meaningless. This is because Miyazaki himself, when asked questions such as, what motivated you to make this film? What are you trying to say in this film? Often answers, I don't know, that's why I had to work hard. So he drew the storyboard without really being sure where he was going. He was drawing the tapestry after the film production was completed, and that's when he realized that he wanted to make the story about Naushka and Kushana. So he tried to flip the images upside down. In this manner, sometimes the creator figures out the theme of the movie while they are making it. So this was the first cut in the opening sequence which shows the title. Okay. Next, the opening sequence with this melody ta -ta 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 -ta, shows something of development of mankind. In the storyboard, this picture comes with a footnote saying, Mankind, once prospered, built magnificent cities reaching the sky and used miraculous techniques to produce flying ships to travel among the stars. These ships are flying above the sun and above the shooting star. So, they are not merely flying ships, but they are ships that fly in outer space to travel among the stars. More than one picture representing the stars are drawn to indicate that they were able to travel between different solar systems. I think it's easier to understand in the storyboard. Or, maybe not. In the storyboard, it has a shooting star, and this is the moon, eclipse moon, stars, and the sun to emphasize more that the ship is in outer space. Actually, the image imparts traveling to other solar systems rather than other planets. These buildings drawn in this part are described as reaching the sky in the storyboard. So, you should actually imagine them as buildings several thousand meters tall. We would vaguely imagine them as modern skyscrapers, but this is depicted as an apocalyptic world 800 years from our time. 